In this Tobacco University video, I'm going to cover some of the main lab equipment that you'll be exposed to, go over the names and show you some images so you become familiar with it. All right, let's get into some of the lab equipment that we'll be utilizing here. Now, there are many different, uh, different types of lab equipment. This is not a fully extensive list, but 45 common names and usages um, of them. We can see quite the extensive list all throughout here. Uh, I'm gonna give you the quick highlights of them. If you wanna pause the video to look at some of the more descriptions, you're more than welcome to. So first off, one of the most common is a beaker, and this is what a beaker looks like. A lot of students get this confused with other things, so holds, measures, heats liquids, has a spout for pouring. Keep in mind, key thing with a beaker, while it will be utilized quite a bit, is its volumes are approximate. You can see it says right on right here, plus or minus 5%. So these are approximate volumes, not precise volumes. Erlmeyer flask, you can see looks very similar to a beaker, um, does a lot of the same functions, uh, used typically more for mixing of liquids because it reduces the chance of spilling. Again, those volumes also are approximate. Uh, the Florence flask, as we can see here, typically not used early on. It'll tend to be a little bit more expensive, a little bit more for specialized kind of um, holding things we can see here. Uh, rounder, not really have the markings for any sort of indication of volume on them, um, but utilized, but not typically for your first year chemistry students. Graduated cylinder, another one that we use very commonly because this will be used to measure volumes of liquids very precisely. They come in a whole host of different sizes, so depending on what you're trying to measure for a final volume, you should choose the size that's appropriate. A gas collecting bottle come in different shapes and sizes, but as the name implies, they are utilized to collect gases that may be um, from the displacement of water um, for certain experiments. In test tubes, just like our graduate cylinders, just like our beakers, these also come in varying sizes as well. They're used to hold small samples, potentially for mixing or heating or just observing reactions. Uh, they, and they are, can be used on all different sizes um, there. Keep in mind that they are thin glass, so they should be very carefully handled. They can break easy and just um, word of caution with those. To carry those, if, especially if they're heated, test tube clamp or test tube holder would be utilized, as the name implies, when it's too hot because they're so small. These metal clamps are used to basically hold it to transport it from one area to another. We also have test tube brushes that come in a variety of sizes because test tubes come in a variety of sizes. You want to use the appropriate size to clean the test tube. If you use a size that's too big, you could break the test tube and not only damage the glassware, but you could push really hard and actually damage uh, yourself. Uh, so you want to use the size appropriate to clean the uh, glass pieces of glassware. Test tube racks, you can see here, they are made in wood or plastic or metal. Typically, the plastic would not be used if we're heating because they can melt. The wooden ones and the metal ones tend to be more common. This is simply to hold those test tubes upright and vertical when being stored or cleaned um, or to conduct reactions. Goggles, super important here for a lot of the labs that we do. They would be worn and they basically shield and protect the eyes from chemical splash, irritating mist, vapors, fumes, all things like that. Keep in mind they must be worn and they are not the same as glasses. Glasses have a gap here. Those goggles seal that area up, reducing the chance of coming in contact with whatever substance you're working with. Rubber stoppers use a lot on test tubes and flasks. They simply um, act as a way to basically uh, avoid spillage or contamination. You don't want to heat a test tube or a flask with a rubber stopper because it would be creating essentially a closed container, but they are utilized particularly during the storage of certain chemicals. Spot plates or well plates, something we'll use quite a bit. Um, they're used to perform small scale reactions, uh, many at a time. You can see some are solid white, some are clear, some have larger um, wells, some have smaller. Um, so just something to conduct those small reactions. Sometimes we'll use a test tube, sometimes a well plate if the reaction is really small volumes. A watch glass, as the name implies, it's a piece of glass that allows you to watch the chemical reaction. It can also hold a small amount of solid um, that can have a reaction on it. And because it's glass, it tends to be fairly inert and heat tolerant. Glass stirring rod, as the name implies, stirring um, is a key factor for this. You can also use it during pouring. You can pour on the glass stirring rod and help ensure that liquid gets into, in this case, the flask very easily. Um, through those adhesive and cohesive properties of water, really help it to ensure you reduce the chance of spilling. Once in the container, you can then use to stir it uh, physically. A medicine dropper, fancy scientific name for me, what we call maybe an eyedropper. It's used to transfer small volumes of liquid, typically less than a milliliter. 
Keep in mind that the rubber stopper can become aged, it can become damaged, so just inspect that before utilizing that. A lot of times they are involved in uh, bottles as well. A disposable pipette is a little plastic for transferring small amounts of liquids, very similar to what I just talked about before, those uh, medicine droppers there. Uh, but this tends to be a little bit more precise, a little bit more disposable um, as, as well. Uh, it could be involved in whatever is being utilized. It might need to be discarded after use. Then there's the micro pipette, which is something very similar to the disposable pipette, but of course these are more precise and not disposable. We basically toss the little uh, tips out and reuse uh, the actual micro pipette. Great for repetitive motions of very precise measurements of small amounts of liquid in the microliter range. Then the purette here. Use this for titrations. This is what it looks like. Uh, used for basically a long graduated cylinder. Basically has a valve here, basically controlling the release and very precisely controlling for those titration experiments you might be using. Litmus paper is basically a way to test uh, for an acid or a base. Looking at blue litmus paper and red litmus paper, depending on what color it turns, gives you an indication whether you're in an acidic or basic solution. In an acidic solution, the blue litmus paper will turn red. And in an alkaline solution, the red litmus paper will turn blue. You always use the other control to make sure uh, to double check the material you're dealing with. And if you dip it into the liquid and the blue stays blue and the red stays red, you're simply dealing with a neutral substance. Then there's pH paper. This is utilized a little bit more because it gives you an idea of the exact pH um, that the substance is. Instead of just acid or base, it'll give you within reason, within about a one uh, a point here of our pH, depending on the color gradations. So hopefully you're good at seeing uh, well-defined colors and you can utilize that to match up to see what the pH is of the solution you're dealing with. Four tips are tweezers. They're for picking up small objects. Um, they can be used to basically hold things in a flame potentially. Um, so really great detailed work. Uh, they are metal there, so they do handle quite a bit of uh, repetitive motions and not a high chance of breaking. We have the funnel, which aids in the transfer of liquids from one vessel to another. No surprise there. They come in different sizes, again, to match the uh, containers you're dealing with. Wash bottles, the name implies it's used for washing things, but labeling is important. Many times a wash bottle might just simply contain distilled water. Other times it could contain ethyl alcohol. Very different substances there. So make sure the wash bottle, while they may look the same, make sure they are properly labeled. A Weibo is a small little plastic container here used to basically transfer uh, substances from one vessel to another. Uh, they can be discarded depending on what you're using. Uh, they're used on balances quite a bit. Um, so just a great way to kind of keep things nice, neat, and organized. A hot plate. Uh, is a plate that gets hot, no surprise there. It does heat the samples very evenly compared to say a Bunsen burner. Um, it, some have stirring capabilities and they have different temperatures you can set them at. Spatulas, just like in the kitchen, same thing here, used to dispense chemicals from the containers. Uh, don't want to be transparent with your bare hands. This is great. They might, they're flat, so it doesn't look like they would hold a whole lot, uh, but they're used for especially those smaller volumes of solids you might be transferring. The scupula, as the name implies, it scoops. It's got more of a dish shape there. It can transport a little higher volumes of solids, very similar to the spatula here, just a little easier to hold larger volumes because of the U shape that it has. The mortar and pestle, uh, we can see here that the mortar is actually the bowl. The pestle is the blunt object that's kind of club shaped here, used for crushing and grinding uh, fine powders or paste, or um, just different substances to get them into a higher surface area that might be utilized for chemical reactions. Beaker tongs, pick up beakers, no surprise there. Um, they typically if the beaker is very hot, uh, that's the beaker tongs will be utilized. You can see they tend to be rubber coated to reduce uh, slippage there. Though, however, in addition to beaker tongs, uh, hot hands is another thing that might be used. A little easier here, basically slip your hands in this and you're basically able to hold it. Uh, great for holding hot glassware for a short duration of time, tend to be a little easier than the beaker tongs um, there. These rubber grips do hold quite a bit, again, for short distances. The all-famous Bunsen burner is used for heating uh, non-volatile liquids and solids because you are have an active flame there. Uh, make sure if you're heating anything in the Bunsen burner and as an open orifice, you're pointing it away from you and others. Evaporating dish is this uh, ceramic dish that's used for heating stable solid compounds and elements and used to evaporate, usually uh, dehydrate uh, certain substances on there. There's a crucible, which is used for heating as well, but it, contain, it can tolerate very high temperatures. So a little bit thicker ceramic than we saw with the evaporating dish, utilized for a very similar purpose. 
the clay triangle, you can see here's the crucible and the clay triangle, just simply used to support and hold that um, crucible upright so it doesn't tip over while you're heating it. Especially if you have to mix anything, it just acts as an extra layer of support. And with our beaker tongs, there's also crucible tongs, and they're basically tongs that used for holding crucibles, and I stress they are not beaker tongs. On a quick look, they might look similar, but they are not used for picking up beakers. Glass plates are, plas are basically plates of glass that can be utilized for microscale experiments, uh, do re reaction testing um, there. They're see-through, and they're pretty tolerant of a lot of uh, chemicals. Triangular file, um, this is basically for uh, primarily cutting cutting and filing things to take off sharp edges. Um, it's a triangle, makes it really easy to hold. There's different surfaces of different um, grits that can definitely um, be utilized for different purposes. Ring stand and its components. So a ring stand is basically a stand used to hold the, uh, the ring that was I'll talk about. Typically, this will be held above a Bunsen burner, so you don't have to be there constantly holding it in over the flame. And as the name implies, the ring stand is the stand that then supports the rings, the rings of different sizes, depending what uh, item or what size item you're trying to elevate above the uh, base surface. There's your utility clamps. They're used for holding things, typically uh, flasks with their narrow neck. Makes it a little easier um, to support those at the right distance above a flame. And then there's also the double uh, uh, clamps here. So we can see here that we're uh, doing titrations. This is a great way to hold them vertically because they are very fragile. They're all very expensive. This is a great way to support them and a nice easy way to hold your flask for your titrations right below them. The ring stand could have gauze wire on it. So instead of a wire triangle, sometimes gauze wire is used. Uh, the white material can contain asbestos, so be careful of that. This is why they're typically not used as often as just that simple ceramic triangle um, simply because you're just trying to elevate something that might fall through that ring above a flame. Everyone's favorite, the strikers. Uh, they're used basically to light the Bunsen burners. They basically are, have a little piece of metal here that's basically through friction rubbed across there and it causes a spark. That spark falls down and ignites the Bunsen burner there. So only utilize these when you need to because if you keep utilizing them, you basically wear out the little striker and then they won't work when you need them. The centrifuge is something that spins really quickly at high speeds. It's used for separating out liquids of different densities. You can decant that top liquid there. And when you're utilizing these, make sure the rotor is balanced based on mass. If it's unbalanced, it actually will vibrate, vibrate off the table and cause all sorts of issues, not to mention loss of the experiment, but spilling of chemicals as well. A fume hood, certain experiments, you might be producing something that's going to be producing a volatile substance. So you have to work within a fume hood or some chemicals may have to be stored in a fume hood. It's basically an area to eliminate or reduce the amount of vapors that you're exposed to. They're basically in a hood uh, evacuated out of the area to reduce your contact with them. And then lastly, a thermometer, and they can be your regular traditional um, thermometers here. They can be your digital ones. It could be alcohol-based, mercury-based are being phased out. Digital ones, make sure they have batteries in them before you utilize them so they're able to be able to give you a reading. Uh, also look at the various uh, temperature settings that they may have. So that's a quick rundown of many of the different objects you'll be utilizing in lab.